Most of you still aren't subscribed. Uh, what are you waiting for? Also, I'm doing a giveaway. Stay tuned for the end of the video to find out how you can win 700 gems in Storybook Brawl. Enjoy. Do you like having a bunch of gold? Well, we are going to be looking at a sweet video today in which I generate a bunch of gold. It is a piggy bank share bear game. And I have to say part of the inspo for playing a game like this does come somewhat from the comments. I'm uh, going to be locking here because Mad Mim Black Cat is, is too good to pass up. But when I posted my Black Friday video uh, two months ago at this point, uh, one of the comments I received was, I love the games where you generate a bunch of gold, play more games like that. And I do really uh, read and I know I respond to a lot of the comments too, but I also try to try out some of the things that you guys think are sweet because I'm like, okay, sweet, people like those types of videos. So we are going to be playing a another one here where I'm going to try to make a bunch of gold. And it's not necessarily the plan going in, but basically whenever you load up a game of Storybook Brawl, you've got all of these sweet ideas and concepts, maybe some from watching some of my videos, and then based off where the chips fall in the given game, if you find an early spinning gold in piggy bank on ShareBear, some spoilers there, that is going to push you in a certain direction. And uh, this game will show you a little bit about what's possible on ShareBear. Up against Lil Nenko's uh, Celestial Tiger here as well. So uh, this was, I, I actually just, uh, I remember this one too, because uh, Lil Nenko was streaming, went over and said hi, and uh, then started giving everybody gold in this lobby and uh, turned into a, a really fun game. So here, I think... Uh, Excuse me. Two different options, or three different options, rather. Can sell the chicken for the dwarf, can roll, and then potentially sell the chicken for something that we find, or we can just cast the magic research um, selling the chicken or hanging on to the chicken. Either way, we roll and we pick up another Mad Mim, which is great because it does support the Black Cat. It, it does probably give us a decent board right now, but we're still just doing okay. Uh, we're going to be able to trade with five of my opponent's units, though, most likely, as long as they don't have ranged units or flying units. And it does look like, especially with getting the first attack, we're going to be doing all right with this one. So we will be hitting Peter Pants for six, a pretty nasty chunk of damage there. We get the chance to pick up another pair. All right, we're still alive. Great. Um, a pair of Polywoggles. And we can set up an interesting board here where we put Polys in one and two, and then um, just just continue to play these Mad Mims. It looks like I am instead going to just play the Black Cat, I guess to have a slightly stronger board. I'm not sure. I feel like I might wind up changing this um, because a Polywoggle in two is still going to allow me to slay with one of these Polywoggles. Let me just jump ahead a real, real little bit. Okay, great. Looks like we're only playing one Polywoggle. Uh, that's fine, I suppose. No, last second, last second. Okay, I thought I changed it. I thought I changed it because uh, that's what I would do. It seems sweeter to just play these polywoggles now. First one's going to miss. Second one is going to hit. So the risk averse strategy there did not quite work out. But we are probably, yeah, going to take out my opponent's egg. And then the sleeping princess is going to soak up a bunch of hits while my opponent takes out my uh, Mad Mim and then eventually my Fannies, or my uh, my Fanny and then eventually my Mad Mims is what I mean. So we're going to take some damage down to 32. We grab our first treasure of the game and upgrade our Polywoggle, which is sweet. None of these treasures are super good except for Spinning Wheel, so I just take it. Um, that was the main reason there. I don't I don't think per Spinning Wheel is like particularly necessary or good or anything like that but it winds up being totally fine here. I do think that the Evil Witch is good, and we've got so many evil units that the Minotaur is obviously very tempting here too. Now we've got a bunch of 8-3 Black Cats that summon 8-3, so I think we're strong on the board, and we've got a Polywoggle that can potentially hit and give us a Tier 4 unit, so we're doing some sweet stuff. And 
If this polywoggle can slay, we can continue to do some sweet stuff. So I'm feeling pretty good about how this game is shaping up so far. We are going to get the slay, and then we're definitely going to be winning this combat. Just a matter of taking out that Sherwood Shore Shop before it runs amok. And then we will hit my opponent for 7, down to 28. So yeah, doing pretty good with the Share Bear. We wind up getting a Sporko. Not the best thing in the world because we already have so many supports. It's a little bit awkward. Like, I've got a frontline Mad Mims here or something. Um, it's, yeah, it's just awkward uh, to figure out exactly how we want to make this work. I, I don't think it's horrible to take the Frog Prince either. Um, and then we can, like, backline this uh, Minotaur or something. I'm not sure. I haven't quite figured it out yet. But I do think that... Um, the uh, health potion is good, especially on Share Bear. Like, I think right now what we'd actually potentially want is like some XP, just because we've got so much gold from being Share Bear and having this spinning gold. But I'll cast these other spells in the meantime and just use that to uh, trigger my Cindy and do some other stuff. So I pick up the Princess Peep, and there's some interesting things I want to do with the Princess Peep. It winds up falling a little bit short, and it's a little bit uncalculated here. What I was trying to do is make it so that when any of these peeps spawn, they will be spawned into slots where they're boosted up. But obviously, for that, I need to play the Mad Mim over the Evil Witch. So, because the, the Evil Witch isn't going to be pumping up these sheep because I didn't take the Corrupted Heartwood earlier on. Uh, so that was a little bit of a, of a mistake. That's me recognizing it there. I just, um, other things going on, we wound up buying like a few things in that shop. Just had so much gold that it was a little bit tough to figure it out. But there you go, that one, one sheep being actually uh, a little bit of a liability. And now we have to deal with this donkey. We are gonna be able to take the donkey out, but they are going to be able to take out my Sporko and take out us as well. So we donate a little bit of gold to them. They also have a spinning wheel, so they're gonna be getting a ton of gold for this one. I was about to pick up a Mad Mim because I was like, wait, I actually need a Mad Mim, not an Evil Witch here, but we already do have a Mad Mim. I don't think I need to triple it, especially because we already have this Sporko. It's not like we need a ton of supports, but now our front line is looking much stronger. Now um, the uh, Sporko can move into slot five there, and then it will, or I mean, we can keep it in either slot, but either way, the point is that it will be able to um, do that. And then I, we find a, a True Love's Kiss, and I'm like, well, I have to go for a True Love's Kiss here. This seems too sweet to have an upgraded tier 5 unit ahead of the rest of the lobby. We can figure out what to do with this Baba Yaga later. And honestly, Baba Yaga isn't that far off from Sporko, so I don't really hate it. I'll pick up a Black Cat Triple, and here we see a Ring of Regen, Ring of Regen and a Monster Manual. I picked the Monster Manual because I already want this Chupacabra. So for that reason, we're just going to lock that here and then uh, we won't be playing the prized pig on this shot. But I'm locking for Chupacabra because it is a monster and because I think it's something that will scale well with this upgraded Baba Yaga because then it's giving Baba Yaga plus four, plus, uh, plus four attack on each slay and that'll add up pretty quickly. Pretty dominating victory here over the Sphinx who also does not have any HP. Uh, or XP, I mean to say. So they really need to find some, um, what do you call it? They need to find some, uh, I'm getting, I'm getting distracted because this is the piggy bank turn. Uh, they need to find a crystal ball off of their lock chest. That's what I was uh, going to say. Uh, piggy bank seems fine here. It's, um, it's interesting, and like I said, I did not go into this game planning on just like, okay, I'm going to force piggy bank, I'm going to do some some silly stuff here, but we've just had so much gold this game, which is like an abundance of riches, and um, was talking with someone the other day, and, and they brought up, do you think that Share Bear, because I've noticed a phenomenon with Share Bear games, and I'll be talking about that in a video on Sunday or Monday. We're gonna be looking at another Share Bear game. But basically, there's an interesting Share Bear um, 
Yeah, did, did some other stuff there as I was looking down. I bought the Medusa. I think Medusa's good with Monster Manual to grow it. And um, well, the, the Choop in, in slot two is, is totally respectable as well. I do want this Choop to attack, but getting a, a Medusa grown a little bit, I think is just going to make our board uh, pretty powerful. Um, so there is an interesting thing with Share Bear games that they seem to kind of end quickly. And because of this, there is a huge strength when you're playing Share Bear to play some of these more traditional strategies, not necessarily go for the copy boy games, which is like the best end game strategy at the time of this patch, but to just play whatever thing is the best. Uh, like on the current board, because the lobby is just going to be over so much quicker. You see, I mean, this is this is 4.2 here as we gain some experience, and one of the players is almost out of the lobby. Three of the players are below 20. We're still sitting pretty healthy. Geppetto's still sitting pretty healthy. But this game does feel like it could end at some point. Um, so, yeah, definitely... Um, kind of interesting uh just i think that there's an interesting effect that share bear has on on lobbies i wasn't planning on getting too into that on this video because in this video it doesn't totally ring true we wind up doing something a little bit sillier with the bear uh but in this case uh it winds up uh, being fine we're gonna sell off the princess peep just to hit that 10 gold we want to build up some econ before we hit level six obviously grabbing xp is good but we want to have as much gold as possible otherwise before we hit level six so next turn we'll have 10 gold stored from the piggy bank plus two interest plus 11 gold from the turn so that is 23 gold plus we're going to get a go getting a gold from uh, spinning wheel and a gold from share bear so we'll be right at 25 which kind of behooves us to not do anything again next turn kind of silly uh chupacabra doing some nice work there that is going to oh that's right yeah it's plus six attack every time a chup connects on the baba yaga uh so that is a ton of stats there and we are even going to have additional gold because of my opponent's prized pig. Lolnanko's prized pig even. Thank you for your sacrifice, Lolnanko. So we are at 26. This seems like a time where you just like roll the genie's wish and then you're done for the turn. However, these are some units. Good Boy is really good. Oni King, really strong on the board. I think I have to take this Oni King here. And one thing that's nice is I can take the Oni King and then I can also sell whatever unit I decide not to play. And then we still have 20 gold. Uh, but Oni King seems like it's got to be so good on this board. The only question is like, do we also pick up the Good Boy to potentially have some kind of pivot? But I don't see us wanting to pivot this game because we have such a strong presence of monsters right now. But it kind of depends. Uh, the, the Shoulder Fairies is also strong. The uh, Ashwood Elm is also strong. And like Queen of Hearts and Black Cat aren't actually that good on the current board. So there's not like a huge need to play those. But I think that we can get away with just this and then continuing to roll a bunch of econ into future turns. That is the name of the game. Econ as much as possible now that we've got the piggy bank and the spinning gold spinning. Uh, so both of these chupacabras are going to slay, throwing a ton of additional attack onto Baba Yaga. So Baba Yaga is definitely a real unit now. What did that start off as? It was a polywoggle. It was a polywoggle triple into Sporko, True Love's Kissed into Baba Yaga, and now it has grown to be quite a formidable unit going to win us the fight here against Occam's Lasers. Peter Pants. Uh, so almost tier six right now, which really behooves us to do nothing. We can roll a little bit, and 9C Terror is also kind of good. I could have just done nothing, but 9C Terror is good, and it actually makes me want to roll for additional 9C Terror, main reason being that it will be harder to find 9C Terrors once we level up. Staff of the Old Toad, 
the perfect treasure. So we'll pick that up. We don't actually need more attack on our monsters at this point. Our monsters are slaying. They're doing, they're doing just fine on their own. Um, could sell the Black Cat for Ride of the Valkyrie. Could sell it for the Golden Chicken, which doesn't do anything because we've got a piggy bank. I guess it potentially allows us to craft other Tier 2 treasures or something like that. But I think this is going to be it for this combat. I think we're going to sit on 26 gold and we're going to move into Tier 6. You know what? Let's do the calculation. 26 gold plus 5 interest, 31. 12 gold for the turn, 43, plus a gold from Share Bear, plus a gold from Spinning Gold. So we're looking at 45 gold as we go into 6.0. That's pretty sweet. That's pretty sweet. Um, does that beat my record? That might beat my record for my Black Friday video, um, which was not my intention. Uh, but I think it does. I think that game, it was either 42 or 52, but I think it was 42. So 55, 45 gold here. Uh, that is an incredible amount of gold and just alone is going to make this a pretty sweet game. But let's see if we can't also grab a win here as well. Uh, so Oni King is going to go down, but we've got a huge Baba Yaga, but we're going to trigger the Court Wizards. So we die. We take seven damage here from Miri and give those Court Wizards just a few more stats. 45 gold for the turn. Absolutely incredible. And this kind of, this seems kind of like a sweet play. We can Hercules and then we can Evil Twin the Hercules. This will give us Two Hercules, we're ahead in XP, we're strong enough. I know we just lost that, or did we lose that last combat? Yeah, but just barely, right? And we took seven damage, that's totally fine. Also have the option here to pick up a pair of Robin Woods, but we've gotta decide what we're doing now. We still have this upgraded Baba Yaga, which is definitely a unit. I kind of like these Robin Woods, but I kind of also hate them. They feel like maybe we can do something stronger. Could pick up another Baba Yaga. It's kind of silly, kind of fun. What I'm thinking here, though, is... Well, I'm not, I'm not honestly thinking anything just yet. Because these Hercules treasures can really inform a lot about the direction that we take this game. I am going to take an Oni King that's just really strong on the board. Uh, also do have to consider at least taking these friendly spirits. And then I also do want to kind of consider Good Boy. The thing is, and I've said this a few times before, this is, this is one of the strongest drums that I'm beating right now. Tier 6 treasures kind of suck for evil comps. And right now we're looking to build, an, or we have an evil comp, but we are looking to pick up two tier six treasures. Maybe not right this second, uh, maybe sooner rather than later as we get to play against Geppetto here with a bunch of baby bears and things. Um, yeah, it's actually going to look pretty sweet for us this combat, hitting some nice break points there. Our other Geppetto gets to trade with that, so that is sweet. And we hit the Baby Bear as well, and then Baby Bear hits us. So we make really, really good progress into both of our Hercules this turn. And what that's going to mean is that we're going to be picking up some Tier 6 treasures soon. And Tier 6 treasures really just are not great with evil compositions. Taking 10 down to 12 um, is a little bit scary, but uh, I still think that we're in a great spot. And now I see that we have the opportunity to pick up another good boy here, and we're just going full pivot. It is the strongest late game strategy. We had so much gold this game also to be able to pull this off, so I think it's fine. We can even upgrade a good boy and upgrade our copycat in one turn right now so singing sword seems great we'll take that we'll toss the piggy bank because we're about to spend the rest of our gold right now we will have to play a unit down which is a little bit awkward but we're definitely playing copy boy at this point uh, we'll move hercules to the back because i don't want it to get sniped before the good boy dies and then i'll sell all of these silly monsters sorry chupacabras we're copy boy now, and uh, this will be one of the, I think this will be the last copy boy video that we feature on the strategy. I did tease it a few minutes ago. I said that in this patch, copy boy was the best strategy. 
So of course, we're gonna try to use our insane gold lead to employ what is the best strategy at this time. Uh, Evil Hercules now is immediately going to trigger as long as it doesn't get range sniped. Um, I should have moved Evil Hercules to three, just so that way it could get attacked. Oh, but that's what I realized, that it didn't even need the Baba Yaga support. So I move over the Baba Yaga just at the last second there. And now the other Hercules, as long as Good Boy can die, which it just barely doesn't die, uh, but it will take uh, get taken out by the, the Triply there. So we get two tier six treasures to replace what we already have. Let's see. Ivory Owl seems absolutely great when we are working with the Copy Boy strategy, but I go for the Ark. Oh, that's that's right. <laughs> I go for the Ark and I keep my Staff of the Old Toad. So I'm thinking, you know what? I still got a bunch of gold right now. I can find a, because I know I've got a four, a five, and a six. All I've got to do is find a three and a two. Unfortunately, I can't find a three and a two. And I don't quite realize that yet. That's why you're going to see me roll past these friendly spirits. Because I'm like, I just want a three and a two right now. And I'm about to realize. I think I realize right now. <laughs> um, so, yeah, definitely made a small mistake there. That is going to mean that I've got to pick up another treasure in order to toss the staff of the old toad in order to make the arc relevant. Uh, so I'm basically only playing with two treasures right now. Could go for nine sea terrors, but I also really want good units. Um, Court Wizard is an absolutely fantastic good unit to play because it means that when our frontline Hercules get attacked, we are going to be able to uh, get some free attack triggers there. So. Hopefully, this doesn't cost us too much. We're upgraded copycat, up, upgraded good boy. So, I think that we've got a decent amount of stats on the board right now, but uh, definitely a mistake. Staff of the Old Toad is sweet. Ark is sweet, but you got to you gotta get them uh, in the right capacity there. You got to hang on to some twos and threes if you're planning on picking up an arc at the very least. And we didn't have even any twos and threes, I don't think, on our board. Maybe like a Mad Mim. And what could have our three been? Oh, the, the Queen of Hearts. We could have played both of those on this board. I mean, they might have been better than Hercules and Baba Yaga, despite those being pretty large units. But we are still pretty large. That is worth considering. And we're up against a Miri, who is generally going to have similarly statted units to our Hercules, so not the worst place to be in the world. Our evil Hercules gets sniped, and then that gives Court Wizard a free attack. And then we get to get in there with the copycat, even trading with a unit as well. So now we just have a ton of stats on this Hercules. My opponent does have Spear, and Spear plus double Court Wizard is a really strong maneuver. But we still have an upgraded good boy that my opponent has to deal with. We're going to give my opponent every single Court Wizard trigger, all that they could ask for. Uh, but I don't think they'll be able to get past this good boy. It would be quite tough. Yeah, we're going to take out my opponent there. Actually, we don't take them out. We put them down to one, which is great because now we've got more time to try to find another treasure. And Lancelot seems like a great way to find another treasure, right? Oh, wow. Okay. Lance is actually exactly what the doctor ordered here. We'll put that in. I could see playing this Echo Wood as well. Uh, we're not going to get twos and threes this turn, like I said. So what else would we be looking for? Just another good boy or another court wizard? And I think I'm going to settle for Echo Wood in this scenario. We'll probably sell this. Oh, no, I don't sell the Baba Yaga. Interesting. Um, maybe I sell it now just for the genie's wish. Um, both of these minions actually have interesting properties about them. Uh, the Baba Yaga obviously has a bunch of additional attack. Um, but it's better to keep the Baba Yaga because the Hercules has evil characteristics. So if I were to true love kiss both of those units, the Hercules would stay evil. So for that reason, it's reasonable to keep the Baba Yaga right now 
um, just to be able to potentially True Love's Kiss that in the future. But we're going to be getting the treasure from Lance here next. And then I will be tossing the Staff of the Old Toad. And I'll be looking to replace Court Wizard and um, Hercules with uh, some tier two. Maybe even Hercules and, and Echo Wood. Um, but we'll be looking to throw some... Uh, two and three cost units onto this board. Uh, but yeah, Hercule or Lancelot gets the buff. That is all that we needed there uh, that they are going to be able to give us a tier five treasure. Uh, so pretty funny, pretty silly stuff there. That's a mistake that everybody can make. And um, we were we were doing too many other sweet things that I definitely got distracted getting two Hercules online in the same turn is definitely a funny and powerful feat. Uh, but of course, uh, you got to make sure you're doing something with those tier six treasures. So now I will be taking Mimic Chest, which is an absolutely insane uh, pickup here. I go from uh, oh, and there's the True Love's Kiss that I was talking about as well. But I do need to pick up a Tier 3 and a Tier 2 unit. Let's let's go for the True Love's Kiss, I think, on the Baba Yaga. Well, the question is, though, actually, how would I play it? I would only play it if it's a good boy. Okay, so we're not playing this. I'm not going to pick this up either. I'm just going to see what other things we can pick up before we... Um, uh, or what other things we can find. And I think I think Baby Root is like one of the better uh, tier twos. The best one being Sherwood Sure Shot. Uh, and then I have to decide if I want to play Echo Wood or Court Wizard. I think the play is actually Court Wizard. Um, I also think that this Unicorn is slightly better than the Baby Root. The question is how much better because Sherwood Sure Shot is, is going to be better than both of them. But I went at the beginning of this turn, I only had, I mean, Arguably one treasure, one onboard treasure, but staff is definitely still a treasure. Um, so I'd say that I had two treasures, and now I have four with the Mimic Chest giving me double arc, double owl. Uh, I just have a ton of stats right now. The main reason that I like keeping the Echo Wood in is because with double owl, it actually does grow a decent amount by itself. It can't get sniped by Smite or a small Doom Breath or um, Lightning Dragon because everything is going to get plus two. Everything is going to get plus four, plus four, which is going to give the Echo Wood. Um, what's four times six? Twenty-four. So it's going to get plus plus twenty-four. Oh, actually, it'll get. Um, it'll get uh, four times seven because it's also getting the buffs itself. Um, so it'll get plus 28, plus 28 at the start of combat, and it will get to retain some of those buffs as well. My opponents don't take each other out. The Miri somehow ties with the Court Wizard. I do think that Shrivel is good against Court Wizard um, for... Now, now they had a they had a good book, didn't they? So it might not actually be the best, but my opponent did have two court wizards. I think they might have also had a good book though too. I think I remarked on that earlier this game. Maybe that was something else though. Here's a Sherwood Sure Shot. That seems like a pretty decent pickup. Probably better than Baby Root. It is interesting that Baby Root pumps the second copycat, which can also be kind of nice. Um, could also decide to replace the Sleeping Princess. The only thing that the Sleeping Princess is slightly, uh, or, or that's slightly stronger than the Sleeping Princess is like, I mean, the Stag does do something. Um, Princess Peep is, is really the main one, though. Um, and then, like, Brave Princess also has some applications, but we're not changing any of these treasures. But Princess Peep would be the main one. There is a consideration here. Uh, that is me uh, talking about the the uh, owls um, being relevant on the Echo Wood. Oh, and I like that too. Frontlining the... Is that good? <sighs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's worth to frontline the Echo Wood. I mean, it's going to be strong. Yeah, it winds up being fine. Like, it's actually a bigger unit than the Sleeping Princess, so this kind of protects 
the sleeping princess and allows that to still receive the good boy buffs because it's kind of a small unit if I get second attack. Um, you get a lot of stuff going on in this game. Was there anything else I wanted to say? Oh, we do actually shrivel. Oh, that's right. This is the spear player. This is not a good book player. So spear um, means that they start the combat with no stats. So shrivel is really good against this particular court wizard comp. And you can see my echo wood is now at crazy proportions. Um, yeah, I do kind of want to play the sleeping princess because it's a princess and sometimes we're putting in court wizard here. It's tough to figure out exactly what the best configuration of units is, uh, but we found a good one nonetheless. So here, could take this Luna's Grace, could roll for a combat spell, could just roll for a spell that gives us more stats. All of those are fine. Geppetto is somewhat weak to shrivel if we hit the bear stain, but I don't think that that is exactly what we want to do. So I'm just going to roll here for a little bit. Main things I'm looking for, I think, would just be like a Gigantify for the good boy. I think that's going to provide us with the absolute most stats. I am considering the health potion there. Um, I think I'm also slightly considering the Echo Wood, but we are going to decline to pick that up. I think that we can do a little bit better. Um, I don't know. Nothing nothing super great here. Obviously, I'd have an Echo Wood triple or I probably wouldn't because if I picked up that other Echo Wood, who's to say I would have seen that one? And we do find a Gigantify right at the last second here. So let's sell off something. We sell the Baby Root. Gigantify on the Good Boy is going to mean now that my opponent has to hit us with a 1 and 7 Pigo. They're probably not going to have any strong frontline units because they are Geppetto. So they're probably working with Baby Bear in the frontline, which means our cap copycats are absolutely insane as well. Yeah, they got nothing that can take it out a copycat. They are just going to fog our totally irrelevant unit. So we will get in with the copycat. That is going to bring us a bunch of stats. The only question is what's in the croc? What's in the croc? And the answer is some piggies. That is not going to be good enough. They actually should have put the uh, wombats in the croc, I think, if they had it. But maybe maybe they've had that croc for longer, and I just don't remember. But this one is going to be a win. That's all she wrote. Good boy up in the thousands. Nowhere close to dying. I think we could even see... Nah, okay, that was asking for too much. I was going to say maybe we could see our copycat attack again. Uh, we are going to get all the way through our attacks here. Uh, as uh, we take out my opponent's entire front line, and now my front line is back to attacking again. Uh, that's going to be all she wrote. I hope that was a fun one. Uh, 45 gold. I have to go back and check. You know what? Let me check right now. Turns out we did not actually beat my record of 62 gold, and I, I forgot which video it was, too. It was Breaking the Bank, not my Black Friday special, but 62 gold absolutely incredible. In this game though, we got to 45 gold, still quite impressive, and we were able to turn that into a pretty nice win. So that is going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I'm no Lex Given. Peace. I'm going to be giving away a 700 gem bundle at the end of this month, and here's how you can enter for your chance to win. First things first, subscribe to this channel. That won't enter you into the raffle, but you will have to be subscribed to win. In order to enter into the raffle, all you have to do is comment on a Storybook Brawl video including this one. Every time you comment on a Storybook Brawl video on my channel this month, you'll get a raffle ticket for my January giveaway. If you comment on a video within the first 72 hours of me posting it, then you get two raffle tickets. And if you comment on a video within the first 24 hours of me posting it, I'll give you three raffle tickets. Might also offer more ways to enter in the future. Uh, I don't want to break the economy of this. I want the main way to enter to be commenting. So leave a comment right now. Let me know what you think of the giveaway and of the video. And thanks for watching.